Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, it's my turn again. My time have, has come. Uh, I'd like to share a story before we start. Uh, those of you who know me know I love surfing and I love the outdoors. And with winter around the corner, time is getting less and less to go for a surf without freezing. So me and my wife went, to, went up, up the East Coast last weekend and we, we chased some swell. I was, I was really excited because I was, I was um, tracking this swell for about a week. And every single day I would, I would check the forecast because in Korea it changes a lot. So you, you gotta be on it. But and then again, I checked it every day. I was ready for it, get, got all my equipment ready. We drove up three hours. I, I probably spent about three hours in a week preparing, checking the forecasts. And then we arrived nine o'clock in the morning because we, we were quite tired after this week, after the school week. And we, we arrived at the beach, it was amazing. It was exactly what the forecast said. And the moment I set my foot in the water, everything changed. The wind came up from the wrong direction and it changed into a big washing machine. So I was, I was standing there and I couldn't believe it. Spending all this time preparing, getting there, and alas, no waves. It, it literally went from perfect to nothing. And I was really devastated because I, I, I was obviously looking forward to this, planned for this. And what we did was we went another 50 kilometers up the coast and found another break that looked all right. And I went in there and same thing. It just changed as I entered the water. And then later on in the afternoon, third spot, same thing. I was, yeah, I was flabbergasted because, you know, in life, we only have this much time. And we'll get to that. But at, the, at that stage, I didn't realize what I was, what I was doing and what I, what I had to realize. So today I'd like to share with you what, what I realized and um, hopefully we can all learn from that. Uh, so we, today's uh, message is about numbering our days. And that is in Psalm 90 if you would like to turn to that in your, in your Bibles. I've got, a, my, I've got the ISR if you, if you'd like to follow on the, on the whiteboard. So we're going to read Psalm 90. Can you see with this? Can I put this? Is that right? Here, I'll, I'll take it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Just don't set it on fire. All right. <laughs> okay, good. All right, let's read together. Or not together, I'll read. Uh, Psalm 90. Jehovah, you have been our refuge in all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you had brought forth the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are all. You turn man back to dust and say, Turn, O children of men, for a thousand years in your eyes are like yesterday that has passed, or like a watch in the night. You have swept them away. They are as, as asleep, like grass that springs up in the morning. At evening it is cut down, and withered for we have been consumed by your displeasure and by your wrath we are alarmed you have set our crookedness before you our secret sin in the light of your face for all our days have been have passed away in your wrath we spend our years like a whisper the days of our lives are 70 years or if due to strength 80 years yet the best of them is but toil and exertion, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Who knows the power of your displeasure and your wrath, according to the fear of you? Teach us to number our days, and let us bring the heart to wisdom. Return, O Jehovah, how long, and be sorry for your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your kindness, 
and let us sing for joy all our days. Give us joy according to the days you have afflicted us, the years we have seen evil. Reveal your work to your servants and your splendor to their children. And let, let the pleasantness of Jehovah our Elohim be upon us and confirm the works of our hands. Oh, confirm the work of our hands. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you for adding another day to our lives. Help us to, to spend it wisely, to honor you, to serve you. May we learn how to do that through your word. And please uh, teach us and remind us to, um, to do it all for you and to, to really focus on, on what's important in this life. Lead, lead my um, message this morning. May it be all yours and not mine. Pray this in Yeshua, our Messiah's name. Amen. Alright. Um, so we, our focus verse... Uh, oh, let's, let's first talk about the, the psalm. And um, apparently it's the first psalm ever written or ever recorded. It's a prayer by Moses. And it was while the Israelites were in the wilderness. Obviously, you know the story where they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years and they saw a lot of people dying around them because they were so close-knit. And um, the lamentation is said to be after the golden calf episode. So this, just to give some uh, context to the psalm. Now we'll, we'll move on to the focus verse. The focus verse is uh, Psalm 90 verse 12, which says, Teach us to number our days and let us bring the heart to wisdom. Now, most of us realize that we are in the middle of our lifetime on earth. I don't know, I don't know who's, who knows people that that became older than 80 years, but it's really amazing if, if people can become older than 80, because usually it, it goes along with a lot of suffering. But um, most of us can look forward to 70 years or 80 years at most, if we're strong. So for us to realize that we're in the middle of our lifetime is very important at this stage, because we only have so, m so many years, and that is if, if we are, are say, uh, spared for those number of years. If, if not, we have less than, than half our life lifetimes remaining. So let's turn to Scripture and read 1 Peter 1.24 that affirms this. which says, All flesh is as grass, and all is team of man as the flower of, gra of the grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls away. We are compared to grass in this, in this verse and we might not feel like that because it just feels like we're going to live forever on this earth. But it's very important to realize our, um, our state. And we've got, I've got another verse that will um, also help us to understand this fact. In Isaiah 64 verse 6 it says, And all of us has become have become as one unclean, and all our righteousness are as soiled rags, and all of us fade like a leaf, and our crookedness, like the wind, have, has, have taken us away. Especially in this season, where we are in autumn, at, nearing the end of autumn, we see the seasons changing, we see leaves that were once beautiful green, um, in summertime, you can't believe it's going to change. You can't believe this place is going to change so dr dramatically. Coming from South Africa, in the southern parts, we don't see this. We, we don't know what, what it's like to actually have an autumn where things change drastically. So this is a really good reminder of, of our lives where we, in spring, everything is new, everything is revived, and then in, in summer, it's amazing 
shades of green. And then just as we thought summer would last and last forever, it changes and it, everything dies down and falls to the ground. So are our lives. In 1 Chronicles 29, we read verse 15. For we are sojourners and pilgrims before you, as were all our fathers. Our days on earth are as a shadow and without permanence. Sojourners, <coughs> realizing that we are passing through this life. We are not here, we are not here to build our kingdoms or... Uh, <coughs> yeah, um, pile up gold and silver and whatever is important for us. But we are just passing through. So let's keep it light. Try and, try and keep it simple. And next slide <coughs> will teach us that we have a creator that is holy. And I think realizing this would take away any anxiety that our time is passing. Because I know time that passes brings with it anxiety. Like before you have to come up and speak to a lot of people, you feel anxious. And um, as the time draws near, it becomes more and more and more <laughs> intense, you know. So, so, so in, that, in that knowledge that we have now, we need to realize that we have a holy creator, um, an Elohim father. He sustains us throughout our years. He is our refuge. So us being sojourners, knowing that He is our refuge and that He is everlasting. So that when we enter everlasting life with Him, that we are free of all this vanity and um, nothingness that changes in an instant and nothing is constant on this earth so we need to strive for what is everlasting <clears throat> now that brings us to our purpose and our purpose is obviously is, is clear in scripture and so I'm asking the question why were we created I think we need to know this in order for us to to have a vision in this life and we were created to serve Jehovah, to praise Him, and for good unto good works. So, knowing that, at least we we know what to focus on now in the remaining years we have. In Ephesians two verse ten, we read, "For we are His workmanship, created in Messiah Yeshua unto good works, which Elohim prepared beforehand that we should walk in them." So even before we knew it. We were created unto good works. So us doing whatever else we, we feel like doing doesn't line up with what we were created for. And that might cause anxiety or worthlessness. You know, the feeling that, that we don't belong or what are, we, what are we doing on this earth? I think this verse addresses that, that question that we might have. And um, just blows it out the water. We should walk in the works that were prepared for us. On to the next slide. Now, as we know, we don't have a, a, a lot of time remaining. Well, most of us don't. The kids, are, the kids might have more than us. Who knows? In Ephesians 5, verse 15 to 17, we read how we can redeem the time. It says, see then that you walk exactly, not as unwise, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are wicked. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the desire of Jehovah is. Again, we are taught to redeem the time, to understand what, our, what is expected of us. In Colossians 4 verse 5 we read, Walk in wisdom towards those who are outside. That means those who are not part of our congregation or our small groups. Um, so that we can redeem the time. 
we need to we need to shine the light we need to be the ones that shine the truth out to others others that don't have the word the scriptures they don't know what what to do in this life we see so many people and i see myself chasing worthless things like like the waves that cannot satisfy they are they are there and they just disappear in an instant so are everything on this earth that is material or that is not everlasting so walking walking exactly walking according to the scripture will will help us to make make um, our days count colossians 4 verse 5 says walk in wisdom towards those who are, are outside sorry i've done this um, very important point <clears throat> now yeshua taught us he taught us in parables so that we might understand and make it personal now let's look at the next parable that he taught us in luke 12 verse 15 to 21 and he said to them mind and beware of greed because one's life does not consist in the excess of his possessions. He then spoke a parable to them, saying, The land of a certain rich man yielded well, and he was reasoning with himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room to store my crops? And he said, I'm going to do this, pull down my storehouses and build greater, and store, store all my crops and my goods there. And then say to myself, Life, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, rejoice. But Elohim said to him, You mindless one, this night your life shall be demanded from you. And who shall own what you have prepared? So is he who is storing up treasure for himself and is not rich towards Elohim. <clears throat> Mindless one, this night your life shall be demanded from you. So, again, we see that even though we have 70 or 80 years planned for our lives, we as, we as mortals, we, we don't know. We don't know when, when our time is up. It could be tomorrow. It could be today. That's why it's such an important point I want to raise, is numbering our days. It comes, it comes forward all the time. And, and um, even though we don't, even if we don't die, he's coming, he's coming again, and nobody knows when. So, on to the next slide. <clears throat> In Luke 12, verse 35 to 40, we read about this. And... Um, it says, let your loins be girded and your lamps burning. It means be ready. Be ready for his, his second coming. And be like Ben, waiting for their master, when he shall return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, they open to him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, shall find watching. Truly, I say to you that he shall gird himself and make them sit down to eat and shall come and serve them. And if he comes in the second watch or in the third, third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. And, who know, and know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief comes, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. And you then, be ready for the son of Adam is coming at an hour you do not expect. <clears throat> so we, do, we definitely don't expect him anytime soon. I, I don't think so. We might, we might not. If we don't, we've got to be ready. And um, in verse 37 we read, Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, shall find watching. Truly I say to you, that he shall gird himself, and make them sit down to eat, and shall come and serve them. What an amazing um, 
amazing time we can look forward to. But it always also says, and if he comes in the second watch or in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. I, I understand that as in a time we really don't expect him. If we are ready in that time, we will, we will really um, be blessed and known as his servants. Um, it's an interesting fact that um, the watches were like times of night or early morning where they had to watch out for, for um, armies coming to invade their city. So there was always somebody on watch and the, the, the hardest times were in that early morning um, time, probably between 2 and 5, where, it's, where you're really going to a very deep sleep. Well, hopefully most of us. And, um, and that's the time where we should be at our, at our, um, uh, at the most awake, you know, for, for he will come at, at a time where we don't expect him. And then we can look forward to eternity with him. In Romans 2, verse 5 to 7, we read, But according to your, your hardness and your un, unrepentant heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and revel revelation of the righteous judgment of Elohim. Who shall render to each one according to his works? He will render each one to each one according to his works. We read that here. Everlasting life to those who, who by persistence in good works seek for esteem and respect and incorruptibility. So we are called to, to do good and we will be, we will be um, repaid for that. So we don't really just, just do everything for, for that reward. Obviously we do it in obedience, but um, there is a reward waiting for us. And John eleven twenty five 25 says, Yeshua said to her when he was talking to to the woman, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen. He who believes in me, though he dies, he shall live. There was um, his, um, one of his followers that this brother died and um, she was very sad about it. And then he raised, he raised him up, Eliezer, from the, de from the dead, saying he's only sleeping. So, so for him nothing is impossible. Now, to conclude, we need to understand that our time on this earth is very precious. It's, it's comparable to, to gold every single day and every hour to diamonds. So let us, let us use it wisely for the kingdom. And, um, and definitely look forward to an eternity with Him. Whereas this life is so short compared to what, we, what we're waiting for. Let us walk in wisdom. In His wisdom. And um, let us ask Him to, to lead us in the right path. Father, thank You for, for showing us that, that and waking us up that our time is short on this earth. Thank you for giving us this time and this opportunity to experience what you have created and the beauty of, of everything you've made. But may we not get caught up in this and not stagnate. May we, re may we realize how precious our time is that you have given us and that you, you are giving us every day. Thank you that we may have a purpose and live with purpose. And that we may help us to know that, um, what your will is for us, for our lives. And our specific lives, because we, we sometimes feel that we don't know what you want us to do. But you have prepared the works beforehand. Help us to, to live and to live to honor you and to do good to others. Even those outside of the congregation. 
so that they might also see who you are and that they may come to believe and be saved unto eternal life with you. We pray this in your Son's name, Yeshua, our Messiah, who died for us and rose again so that we might rose with Him in the last day. Amen.